Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease. I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute for medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. We are going to talk about your brain as it relates to what's called the limbic system. And your limbic system have your pituitary hypothalamus, your amygdala, hippocampus, septum, your thalamus, and a few other structures. But basically what these things work together to do is they kind of regulate your eating and reproduction, and they're also involved in learning and memory. And for this particular episode, we are going to talk all about the hypothalamus. And you're going to see that over time, and at the very end of this series, I'm going to tie everything together. And let me just tell you, my brain, and it's just always, my mind is blown every time I really think about this and think about how all these structures work together and why the hormones related to your thyroid gland are just so important and why they touch all of these different bodily functions. And that has always been something for me that was a question. It's like, why does that little teeny tiny butterfly shaped organ control so flipping much? Well, we're going to talk about it. So the first thing is your hypothalamus. That structure is to maintain homeostasis or a steady state. It's what your body status quo is. And allostasis, which is more of a new term, so to speak, but that is the process by which your body adapts to whatever stressors that occur or come about in our lives. So when you think about the hypothalamus itself and what its core functions are, it's involved in your fluid and your electrolyte balance. It's involved in regulating your blood pressure, your body temperature. It controls your sleep or your circadian rhythms and thirst and appetite. Now, if that list wasn't enough in and of itself, it's also involved in the expression of emotion and how that impacts us physically. So when you think about if someone says something that's not so nice to you, what happens? Your shoulder slumps, you feel bad, your head drops, like your, your hypothalamus is involved in all those things. And it's also related to your short term memory. And hello, brain fog, when you walk into a room and you can't remember anything that someone just said to you right before you walk through the door. Yeah, we're going to get to that. And also just different, different, it relates to different aspects of just parenting and attachment behavior. So it really, it meaning your hypothalamus works to influence, so to speak, various areas of your nervous system. So it's really touching on your autonomic nervous system, your neuroendocrine system, and then your limbic system, which is what we're actually focusing on. The other two systems have to do with like your brain and spinal cord, as well as different ways of communication from the perspective of your neurons and synapses and all those fun things. And it's really cool to me because I started off as a neuroscience and behavior major, but I will not bore you with those details. For now, we're going to focus on the hypothalamus today. So here's where it is important for us to recognize as how it impacts our body. So yes, I just said all of those different systems, but here is where the hypothalamus is like, it's gold for us. And that is, it affects our endocrine system via the pituitary gland. And that nice little gland that 
you have your pituitary and your pineal gland. So heads up, we're going to be talking about the pituitary gland in detail in the next episode. The pituitary and the pineal gland, I'm going to combine both of those. But just so you you realize this, it regulates the smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle, our response to stress. And even when we think about just how our pituitary gland works, just as a preview, all of that is really important in terms of sending out those chemical messengers, which are our hormones, as I stated, it's going to send that throughout our bloodstream to act on different organs in our body. And when you think about the fight or flight response or the rest and digest response, what's happening? Your body is preparing for action. And and I talked about this in our burnout episodes. Your body is trying to constantly figure out okay, am I safe? Am I not safe? Am I, am I okay? Like what's happening? So when you're in that constant state of stress, your body is sending out all of these hormones to kind of keep your body revved up. And it's no wonder why we have that constant fatigue. It is not fun. And I know very much so how you feel because I have experienced that for many, many years. And as I said, and as I know many of you have told me, stress triggers your condition and it is nothing worse than having a thyroid storm. So I also want to talk very briefly about the different hormones that are released from your hypothalamus. And these are going to be really important for you if you are going to the doctor or if you're working to conceive or you're pregnant, these hormones are so incredibly important. And you have eight hormones that your hypothalamus regulates. And the first is your thyrotropin releasing hormone. And that is basically a hormone that controls the metabolic processes of your cells. And that hormone itself is related to lactation. So whenever you have issues with that particular hormone, you may notice that your milk production may be off. When you think about dopamine, yes, it functions traditionally in the neuroscience world as a neurotransmitter, but it also has hormone effects, meaning that while you're pregnant, your body won't actually start, and fortunately for us that aren't pregnant, your body won't actually start the process of lactating until you've given birth. Then we have our growth hormone, and that is going to promote the development of any organism in terms of it growing. So that is going to be very, very important. And then we have somatostatin. So this one isn't something that's necessarily talked about too much, but it has the opposite effect of our growth hormone. And that also affects your bone and muscle growth. And in a lot of cases, I have actually had to talk to my mom about this in terms of making sure that because she has osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, we we have to make sure that we're monitoring a lot of these levels for her just to understand how can we make sure that she is as well as she can be given the circumstances. And then we also talk about or we think about oxytocin as well as vasopressin. And those two hormones are often sent to our pituitary glands, but vasopressin That guy plays a role in memory, social behaviors, and just our interactions with our day-to-day life. And as we know, oxytocin is our emotional bonding and trust hormone. So we, we know that these hormones are very, very important for just processing of other hormones and it makes sure that things stay together in our bodies. 
And I'm going to stop here because those were a lot of vocab words. And don't worry, I'm creating a workbook for you to have all of these things together in one place. But where are we going? So we set the stage with talking about our hypothalamus. And what we're also going to start working on or thinking through is what role does our pituitary gland play in relation to our other endocrine organs? And what I will tell you are words that you may have heard kind of thrown around is our catecholamines, polypeptides, glycoproteins, or steroids. And basically, those are just classes of hormones. So you know what they are. And when you think about a catecholamine, that's your epinephrine and norepinephrine. So those are your stress hormones. Your polypeptides or your glycoproteins, those are your insulin and thyroid stimulating hormones. And then your steroids or cortisol. So cortisol, as we know, is produced by our adrenal cortex. So when you think about your kidneys, that little guy that sits, it sits right above them. And that also is related to your stress response and just regulation of blood sugar. So I really wanted to kind of tell you what those things were. And I also wanted to affirm that you definitely know what's going on. And I personally very much so believe in adrenal fatigue as a result of going through so much of this after working with clients and seeing what's going on. And it's something that we all need to kind of lock arms and talk about and think through. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about the pituitary and the pineal gland and what they control. We're also then going to talk about our thyroid gland because, hello, Thyroid Warrior Podcast, we're talking all about our thyroid. And then finally, we're going to bring all of those things together and talk through what you can do. And yes, I'm giving you a sneak peek of what's coming in the new year. We're going to be talking about our sense of smell. Hmm. I'm excited about that because I'm going to introduce essential oils to you because I am an aromatherapist and I want to make sure that you have different modalities in terms of how to just work on your overall wellness and make sure that you're obtaining that radiant health, especially as we're in a pandemic. So with that, be happy be whole, and be well. Take care. Okay, thyroid warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember, be great, reflect on your triumphs, and as always, be well. Take care.